Former NBA star Dennis Rodman is back in North Korea. The flamboyant athlete is training North Koreans for a basketball game against other former NBA players that's set for next month in Pyongyang. But the visit is raising some eyebrows. North Korea's leader has faced harsh international criticism for his actions since Rodman's last visit, including the execution of his ex-girlfriend and then his own uncle. But as Paul Johnson explains, Rodman is focused on basketball. This way, the passport's here. Back to North Korea. This time, former NBA star Dennis Rodman says he'll be coaching basketball and, as before, saying nice things about one of the world's most repressive regimes. Don't be afraid, man. It's all love, man. It's all love here. Which isn't what most people say about North Korea. Since Rodman's first trip in the spring, the country's young leader had his ex-girlfriend and members of her dance troupe executed by firing squad. Last week, his own uncle and the country's de facto second-in-command met the same fate. And recently, an 85-year-old American tourist was arrested there and held for a number of weeks. Another American is still in prison there, none of which seems to bother Rodman very much. I got nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. Rodman says the purpose of this trip is to help get North Korea's top basketball team ready for a game in Pyongyang next month against a yet-to-be-announced roster of former NBA stars like himself. He also expects to rekindle his new friendship with leader Kim Jong-un. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud to say he's my friend because he hasn't done anything to, to uh, put a damper or to say any negative things about my country. Or As for Rodman's country, the State Department has made clear that Rodman is there only as a private citizen and doesn't represent Washington. And the whole trip is apparently organized by a British online gambling site that wants to expand in the U.S. While some call this basketball diplomacy, others suspect it's more of a publicity stunt. Paul Johnson, Global News, Beijing.